Uh, hi class, this is Professor Smith. I'm going to be doing a movie on Ojai. A professional golfer is shopping for a brand new brand of golf ball and he likes most of the features of one particular brand, but he wants to make sure that the brand has a desirable spin rate. And that's the rate at which the ball spins on its axis after being struck by the golf club. So to test the spin rate of this new brand of ball, the golfer hits the brand of ball on a hundred fire shots and a computer measures the spin rate for each shot. The computer then produces the following histogram, that's the histogram down here below, with the hundred spin rates for this particular brand. It says based on this histogram, Based on this histogram, draw the OGI, the cumulative relative frequency polygon, for the spin rate data. So let me scroll down so you can see uh, the axes to draw the OGI. So here is the OGI. So in order to um, construct a cumulative relative frequency OGI, we need to take a look at the histogram and uh, write down and capture the frequency for each of the classes. So let's do that real quick using um, Excel. Now that I have Excel open, I can see for the first class in the histogram that goes from 5,000 to 5,500, and that's revolutions per minute for the spin rate of the balls. We had eight of them that had that spin rate, so I'm going to type in eight here. And then from um, 5,500 to 6,000, we had 10 that had that spin rate. And then I'll go ahead and finish in filling in the rest of the table. And so now we have captured um, in table format on Excel what the histogram shows. So for an OJIVE, you need to do the cumulative frequency. And in this particular case, not only the cumulative frequency, but the cumulative relative frequency. Um, so this is out of 100 spins. So it turns out I'm going to go ahead and unhide a column that I've uh, inserted here. So I'll uh, unhide this column all right so what the cumulative does instead of looking at it like this first case it does it's the same 5,000 to 5,500 that is 8 but in the next case instead of going from <coughs> 5,500 to 6,000, we're going to look at what are the number of frequency for the spin rates or the number of balls that have a spin rate that go from 5,000 to 6,000, not 5,000, not 5,500 to 6,000. So basically, we're almost ignoring this first column. So I know from 5,000 to 5,500 it's 8, so I have 8 here. Then from 5,000 to 6,000, I'm going to add the 8 that I had already, plus I'm going to add the 10, which would give me 18. And then if you add up all the ones from the previous column, I'm going to do the 8 plus the 10 plus the 25. It turns out when I add all of those up together, 8 plus 10 plus 25, it's 43. But notice something, adding 18 and 25 will also give you 43. So you can add up the previous frequencies or you can add the cumulative 18 plus the new frequency. Similarly, if you were to add up all three of the next guys here,
So if you were to add up these frequencies, add up all of those, you would get 67. But notice that's the same as taking 43 plus 24, which is 67. So let's do the same thing here. We're going to take the 67 and add it to the 22, which will give me 89. And then I'm going to add 89 to 11, and that will give me a 100. And that was the total number of balls that he tested out. Now that gives you the cumulative frequency. And then we'll just go ahead and uh, um, let you see that on the screen. Now what we need to do is do the cumulative relative frequency. So let's do that. So cumulative relative frequency. And then I'll wrap that so that you can see it as well. I'll use the little paint tool, so I'll just grab that guy. And I'll copy the same format there. So then we have cumulative relative frequency. So we're going to do 8 divided by 100. And when you do 8 divided by 100, that's going to give you 0 0.08. And then 18 divided by 100 will give us 0 0.18. And then 0 0.43. And then 0.67, and then 0.89, and then 1.0. And so that will give us our cumulative relative frequency. So what we're going to do is we're going to graph these guys here relative uh, to the values on the x-axis. So let me scroll down and to Alex and do that for you. So I'm going to hide uh, these guys here and uh, just uh, show you the relative uh, cumulative frequency so that you can um, see it on your screen. All right, great. Okay, so we're going to go for the first one here. We're going to take the rightmost endpoint and grab it, grab it up to 0 0.08. And so if you look on the vertical scale, I don't see 0.08. But there's a feature in Alex that allows us to graph that value. So I'm going to go ahead and let you see how to do that. So I'm going to type in 0.08. And then I'm going to hit this horizontal line. And then what it does is it places a horizontal line at 0.08. And so I can draw my mouse up to that. It says 0.08. And then the next one is 0.18. So I'll go ahead and type 0.18 on Alex, and then I'll draw the horizontal line, and then I'll connect it up to that line. And then the next value is 0.43, so I'll type in 0.43, draw my horizontal line, and then drag it up to 0.43. And then the next value is 0.67. And then the next value is 0.89. And then the last value is 1, and so I don't need to input that because that value is shown on the vertical axis of 1.0. And so a cumulative, re cumulative relative frequency polygon will um, always um, end up at 1. And notice that it climbs up. Oh, took too much time working on it. So we'll go ahead and do another one um, and go back into Alex and open up and do another one. So I was able to read input the information, and uh, they really liked it. So here's another one, and uh, again, uh, this one is a wait away. You can't see the text uh, on your screen yet. Let me move this so you can kind of see it. All right, 
So Weight Away is a company that sells weight loss plans, often advertise the effectiveness of its plans by highlighting stories of clients who've lost extraordinary amounts of weight. To get a better indication of the general effectiveness of the plan, we asked Weight Away to send us information about typical clients. Weight Away mailed us a brochure with the following histogram, displays the weight loss in pounds over the past month for 50 of their weight away clients. Note that a negative value for weight loss represents a weight gain. So then now they want us to do is to construct the following. It says based, based on the histogram, draw the OGI, the cumulative relative frequency polygon for the weight away data. So here's another problem where they ask us to do relative frequency. Sometimes they don't ask you to do relative frequency. Um, <clears throat> oh, excuse me, I take that back. They do ask you to do cumulative relative frequency. In this particular case, they give us the relative frequency. Remember on the last example, the histogram uh, didn't give us the relative frequency. We had to divide. It gave us um, not relative frequency, but frequency. Here, let me scroll back so you can see. See, this one was frequency. So um, the OGI was always going to ask you for cumulative relative frequency, uh, but well, you can't see that. Now you can see it. So now you can see that it says frequency. So just make sure you pay attention to that. So if they give you the frequency, uh, uh, and they ask you for a cumulative relative frequency polygon, then you have to divide by the total number of values that are being um, added up, or number of, in this particular case, it was 100 spin rates. All right, so um, let's go out and uh, finish this one. But what I'd like to do, I, yeah, let me go out and do this one. So here we are back to our weight away example. And so in order to do the OGI, we're going to be adding up the frequency. So if you add 8 plus 16, that's going to give us 24 or 0.24. And then if you add the previous to the next, that'll give you the next uh, cumulative frequency. So let's go ahead and start doing that. So we said the first one's 0.08. And remember, you start at the rightmost endpoint. Not the rightmost, but the uh, one, not the left endpoint of the first class, but the right endpoint of the first class. So for our uh, weight away guy here, it was 0.08. So we're going to go ahead and put in 0.08. Again, when we look on the vertical axis, we don't see a 0.08, so we need to use this little help here. So we're going to put in 0.08. Draw the horizontal line, and then take the endpoint that's to the, the right of the first class and take it up to 0.08. And then the next one, we added the 16 and 8 and got 24, so we're going to do 0.24. So the next one's 0.24. And then the next one was 0.26. And if you add 0.26 to 0.24, that'll give you 0.50. And so we'll go ahead and use 0.5 and go up to 0.5 for the next one. And then let's go back up to our histogram so we can see. So that's adding up the first three. So 0 0.24 and 0 0.26 gave us 0 0.50. Now add 0 0.50 to 0 0.22, and that will give us 0 0.72. And then let's uh, scroll back down so you can see what I'm typing in. And so I put in 0 0.72, and now I'll drag it up to 0 0.72. And then the next value in the OGI, 72 and 16, is going to give us 88. And so I'm using the little tool. You can't see me doing it on the little bar. Let me move this over so you can kind of see what I'm doing with the whole thing. All right, 0.88. And then if we scroll up to the next one, 0.12 plus 0.88, we're nowhere on the right track because when you add 0.88 to 0.12, that gives us 1, and that's what it should end up with. Okay. So for a cumulative relative frequency, it would end up with 1. Uh, but if it were relative frequency, still accumulating them, instead of adding up to 1, it would add up to 50. All right. All 
All right, let's do one more. All right, here's the last one that we'll be doing. Multiple myeloma is a form of cancer, and for decades there was no known treatment. Rather recently, though, doctors surmise that the drug thalidomide, 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 I'm not sure how to pronounce that, uh, which was given to pregnant women in the 1950s, but was subsequently found to cause birth defects, may extend the lives of those afflicted with multiple myeloma. In an extensive clinical trial, 25 patients, and you can't see that on the screen, I'll just slide it over a little bit. It's telling you that 25 patients were diagnosed as having multiple myeloma, myeloma and were treated with the thalamide, and the subsequent number of months that each survived was recorded, and supposed that the data are displayed in this histogram. So let me drag it over so you can see the histogram. So here's this histogram showing the frequency distribution. So this is telling you that um, four people uh, lived an additional 10 months after taking the medication. Um, nine lived um, from 10 to 20 months. That's almost a year and some months. And then seven lived 30 months. And 40, uh, three lived uh, between 30 and 40 months. And two lived between 40 and 50 months. And so this one they ask us, based on the data, excuse me, based on the histogram, draw the ogive, ogive, jive, oh my goodness, ogive, for the cumulative relative, cumulative frequency polygon. So this one isn't relative, it's frequency. All right, so um, we're going to go ahead and use the histogram to grab our values. So the first one is 4. So we're going to grab 4, and so we take that first class from 0 to 10, and then we're going to draw up to 4. Since 4 is not shown on the vertical axes, again, we're going to use that little um, help there to put in 4 and draw it. So I'll type in the number 4 and draw my horizontal line. So in the past, we were doing it for relative frequency, so now for this one, it's frequency. So I draw that right end point at 10 up to 4. And then I'll scroll back up to my histogram, and I see that the next guy is, is a 9. All right, and so we want to go to 9. Oh, dearie. My 4 got bamboozled. Okay, and so um, we go up to 9. So what's 9 plus 4? Yeah, you're right, it's 13. So I'm just going to go ahead and use that tool to draw my horizontal line at 13. And I'm going to take my next endpoint, grab it up to 13. Then when we scroll back up to look at our histogram, again, we see 7. And with 7 and 13 on a good day, it's 20. And you can use the calculator because the calculator is available on these problems. So you can definitely use the calculator. So we're going to grab it up to 20. And since 20 is on the uh, vertical axis there, I don't need to use the help to draw a little horizontal line. And then the next thing we go to is we're here, 4 plus 9 was 13, and then 9 plus 7, I mean, excuse me, and then 7 and 13 was 20. So then we got 23 and, of course, 25. And remember, these were 25 uh, patients. So we're going to pull it up to um, the next value of 23. And so here again, I'm going to need the little tool. And then the last one will be 25. And again, it'll always top off at 25 or 50, depending on the number of samples they're taking a look at, or one if it's a relative, um, a cumulative relative frequency polygon. So thank you for your time. I hope this little 20-minute um, uh, video was able to um, assist you in um, being able to do the objective on um, OGIVES. And so it's very good, and we always like that. End on a good date, a <laughs> good note. Um, again, this is Professor Smith at 916-813-9027 if you have any questions. Bye-bye.